Hi everybody, in today's video I thought we'd take a closer look at the Lomography, Lomography Lomo LCA uh, Plus 35mm film camera um, that I got very kindly off the folks at Lomography a, uh, a few days ago actually. Um, a little bit of the history and basically you know what you can expect it to do if you get one as well. So the Lomo LCA, the original one, was built in Russia in uh, I think it was Leningrad in the 19, 1980s um, and after production ceased um, a group from Europe um, fired it up again in the late 1990s the Lomography group because they enjoyed the look of the photographs that the LCA produced um, its ease of use um, the aesthetic of the camera um, and yeah and so they got the factory working again and then in the 2000s production was moved to China which is where the LCA plus is made now but sort of it's basically to the original spec of the LCA with some things taken away and some things added in what I've done as well is I just thought I'd give you a quick size comparison with a couple of kind of popular film cameras just to give you an idea maybe for the other so this is an Olympus trip 35 um, as you can see, the LCA Plus is a little bit smaller. It's not quite as small as the, was it the stylus? I couldn't find my stylus. It's somewhere hidden away in a drawer. Um, so that, and then this is a Pentax uh, K1000, 35mm SLR. Not a massive film SLR, but quite a popular, popular one. And as you can see, size-wise, the LCA is quite a lot smaller and definitely an awful lot lighter. Than, than that DSLR, but they're all using 35 millimeter film, um, and uh, yeah, so they're part, you know, part of the same family. So the LCA. So what the LCA Plus is? It's a automatic exposure um, 35 millimeter film camera with zone focusing and a few other cool features. So you know, starting at the front. So obviously you can um, you slide this lever here and that exposes the lens and the viewfinder. You can't actually shoot until you do that. Then if we look on the back of the camera, we've got that's the little viewfinder you look through there. We've got the film winder there. Um, with the LCA Plus they added the window so you can see what film, well you can actually see that you've actually got film inside the camera um, and also what ISO the film is um, because if we go around to the front of the camera what you can see that it's probably a bit tricky to see actually but there's a little dial there that you change that changes the ISO and just underneath that window it tells you what ISO you're shooting at and above that that's the exposure the automatic exposure um, magic eye if you like that, that sets the exposure um, Remember, with when you've got something like an auto ISO uh, lever, it, it's, it's handy to select the correct ISO of your film. But it also allows you to do um, exposure compensation as well. Um, if you want to make your photos a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, you can put the wrong ISO value in to adjust it that way. So you know, so if you're running 400 speed film. Um, and you want your photos to be a little bit darker, set it to ISO 800 if you want to run, make them look a lot lighter. Set it to ISO um, 100 or ISO 200, and you can do that that way, which is pretty cool. Zone focusing we mentioned, didn't we? So what we have here on the side is we've got this little lever which moves up and down, and you've got 0.8 of a meter, 1.5 meter, 3 meters, or infinity. Very similar to the idea on the the front of the Olympus trip where you've got um, these little icons of people and it might be I prefer the little icons of the people and it may be an advantage to think of them that way you know 1.8 meters is like a portrait you know, it's a head and body um, sorry did I say, sorry 0.8 meters that 1.5 meters is you know a full body portrait of maybe two people um, three meters is you know a group of people and then infinity is for your for your landscape shots. So what, what this means, you may think, oh gosh, I've got to manually choose my focusing. Isn't that, isn't that really tricky? Doesn't that slow things down? Well, funnily enough, it doesn't. It often can speed things up faster than even something like auto 
focus because the way that you imagine the way that you use the camera is that you would I won't wind it on because I've got some filming but you know so you, so you take it out of your pocket ready to take a picture you've got your finger ready on here and you what you can wind it on and then as you're bringing the camera up to the viewfinder you know how far away the subject is so with your finger on here you could flick it all the way down to do a landscape photo if they're pretty close you can you can have it up if they're just you can just go one notch down open up the open up the um, shutter frame your picture hit the button and that's it dunk you know you're good to go so don't write off anything uh, any cameras just because they're manual uh, exposure or um, fixed exposures like this. In fact, using the, the levers on something like uh, the Lomo um, is it's actually faster than something like an SLR where you've got to move backwards and forwards and you're, you're looking at whether the, the little prism in the middle of the viewfinder has is, is come, come into phase. And even the dials on, a, on an Olympus trip because because it's a lever you've either got top or you've got bottom and that, that's nice and nice and easy to do so um, I'm, I'm quite excited to, to have a play with that as I say we've got the magic eye on there for the exposure we've got hot shoe on the top so we can put a flash in there from what I've read of the documentation I think you would call this a <laughs> If it was a if it was an SLR or a DSLR you'd call it a second curtain sync flash and what that means is the way that the flash works when, it, when you when you press the shutter is that when you press the shutter the camera still thinks it hasn't got a flash on so it'll expose the photo for a long duration and that's a feature of the LCA plus the fact that in low light conditions it will leave the shutter open for a long time you know that it will leave the shutter open for a half one um, two seconds so it'll do that and then when the shutter is about to close bang it'll fire the flash what that leads to is those interesting flash photos where you'll say you see someone who's running along say someone's running right to left um, you know across a scene you press the trigger as they come into the frame it starts exposing the picture and then when they get to there it fires the flash so you get them frozen in time here and then you get that blur behind them um, which is often the preferred method of flash you want for kind of artistic artistic uh, looks. So so that, that, that that's pretty cool. Um, we've got our little window to tell us what frame we're on there. And then if we go onto the bottom of the camera, there's, there's some cool things as well. So we've got our battery uh, compartment there. Takes button cell batteries. Um, uh, so you pop them and they, they do the auto exposure. We've got our film rewind um, button there when we get to the end of the film. I think I couldn't say anything documentation but that looks like a power winder uh, adapter. I don't know if they do one from the LCA. That's normally when you put something on that they can wind, wind it on quickly but I don't know it might just be a bit of the work sticking out of the case. And then this button here is really really cool. That is a double exposure button. Um, so what that means is if you want to take a, a an artsy shot say where you might want to take a photo of say um, say you're at the Statue of Liberty um, and you want you take a picture of the Statue of Liberty and then what you do is you can flick that switch across there and then the camera will take allow you to take another photo without winding it on so then you could do a photo close up of someone's face and so those those two images will then be superimposed on each other when you get the film developed now you have to be a little bit careful with your exposure because you're, you're firing twice as much film um, light onto the onto the film as you normally be. So you could even do a little bit of exposure compensation, as I said. So you could dial your your, your ISO. Um, uh, say I'm at 800. I could put in a ISO of 1600, and then I could take two pictures of different things, and then that they would then have an acceptable exposure. But remember. When we use terms like acceptable exposure and focus and, and framing and all this sort of stuff, that's not always the point behind um, the, 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 the lomography way of doing things. We're after capturing a moment in time, uh, emotions, a look and a feel. And so accuracy is pretty low down there. You know, Sharp focus is pretty low down there in terms of the things we're trying to do. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. I think we've really we've covered a lot of it. Um, sort of a couple of technical things. The 
again we're auto exposure, uh, zone manual focus um, it's a uh, f2.8 maximum aperture uh, and it's a 32 millimeter focal length on the lens so it, that's a that's a nice focal length for a um, for, for a compact film camera similar I think what was the yeah the Olympus trip is f2.8 40 millimeters so you know very, very you know similar sort of thing it feels in the hand pretty chunky actually very comparable to the Olympus trip you know the Olympus trip has like the metal top and kind of the plastic body and it's very similar on the Lomo um, so you know birds of a feather I would say so I'm very looking forward to going out and playing with the with the Lomo so kind of there we go that's the Lomo LCA plus a little bit of history um, a little bit of how you can use it and what to expect from it and um, look out for lots more videos coming from uh, from robnonphoto.com well actually nothing from robnonphoto.com so I haven't adopted it in ages but the, <laughs> the, the YouTube channel I guess I'll have to do some more stuff on robnonphoto.com because it's still out there um, you can still check that out anyway put your questions and comments down below thank you very much for, for watching thank you very much for all the comments on my previous uh, Lomo video it's nice to hear from everybody old friends um, on there and um, yeah I'll see you all again soon thank you very much